Hello, everybody. It is Renee and Dee today, and we are going to be talking about all kinds of ways to have phase one success. And the biggest way is, number one, to follow the protocol 100%. If it is not on your phase one sheet, it's not going in your mouth. And um, number two, there's tips and tricks to really meal plan, to get all your veggies, to try different veggies. And that's what Dee is going to be sharing with us today. So before we get started, please share this broadcast. Let other people know about it because that's the way that we are able to get more and more viewership for all of our phase one tips and success uh, posts that we do. And, and we love to share our information. We are coaches. I'm a coach in California and Dee is a coach in Canada. And she's going to um, start off by telling us a little bit about her own story. So send us your likes, your hearts, share the broadcast with us. And if you would like to join Dee's private recipe Facebook group, all you have to do is type recipe in the comment section below and you're going to get a message from Facebook Messenger and that will give you a link directly to Dee's Facebook site. So it's a private group. She does recipe cards for you. She does amazing stuff with not only veggies, but with all of the ideal protein meal uh, packages so that you can try variety and, and be, you know, enjoy the journey because the journey doesn't end here. This is just the start of the journey. So again, share likes, hearts, and then tell us where you're from. Okay, Dee, so tell us your story. Hi, hi everybody. <laughs> nice to see you all today. So I am a coach and program user at Redcliffe Pharmasave um, in Alberta, Canada, and I love the Ideal Protein program. Um, I love that you eat real whole foods. Um, I love how they have revamped maintenance for more information on that and how we're going to use those whole foods as nature's medicine. And um, today's segment of talking about vegetables is that um, I do notice in myself and in clients when they are incorporated into part of your everyday um, food choices that you have a real tendency to eat less of um, um, unnutritional carbs. I want to call them. We tend to um, reach for fillers that tend us that tend to want to make us reach for even more of those same kind of fillers. But when we have a really um, nutrient dense diet. Uh, we are more satisfied. We stay away from kind of the garbage fillers, and uh, we're just we're happier and healthier. And um, there's so many long-term health benefits to those vegetables, and they're so important to us. And so often, when our diet is declining, then that's when we see um, um, health declining as well. So, so um, tell us a little bit before we get started your own ideal protein story, how you how you transformed your own life and um, how you became a coach. Well, I actually have to admit that um, I was a two-time loser and I am actually currently um, in phase one again as well. And I'm going to be just really, really honest with you. I made really poor maintenance choices this fall and I am carb sensitive, and so it catches me really fast. So if you don't put the work in, <laughs> you kind of you get the opposite of the results you want to see. Um, so the first time I did the program, it worked extremely well. It was expedient, um, but I found that I have the personality type that I just didn't like to eat the packets. I cook from scratch at home, always have, and so I tended to, um, if I had a packet, I was thinking about 10 different ways that I could use that packet. Now, that being said, there is, there, it is totally fine just to use the packets as intended. You don't have to make anything with them. I just really love to give dieters both options. So on that side note, unfortunately, the first time that I did the program, uh, when I was to a weight that I felt I was happy with, 
I simply walked away. I did not phase out properly, so I did not do phase two, three, or four maintenance because I had done so well in phase one that I, my attitude was, I got this. I know what I'm doing. I am in control here. And I got away with it basically for about six months because I was taking care of the new me because I was happy with the new me. And then, of course, when all those reasons that sneak back up on us where we let our health decline, um, once I started to gain, it was kind of a roller coaster gain because I was using negative food choices as, as my coping mechanism. Um, and ironically, a girlfriend of mine was in the exact same um, situation. And without telling each other, we had actually booked um, to restart out at Redcliffe Pharmacies, where I met Melissa Hozak and team. And I just I have to say this, my, the first clinic I went to was fantastic. And I, so, I mean, I am, I am so fortunate that any coaching experience that I've had personally was wonderful. Um, when I did head out to Redcliffe, um, it was, it was just such a, there's, uh, there was a few different gals and everybody seems to be good at something different. And so it brought a, a, a lot to my experience. And I found it to be a non-judging environment. Um, the coaches actually in our clinic were very familiar with my story and they had um, all themselves lost an extreme amount of weight. And so I felt like I was in good hands and uh, I learned lots. I continue to learn lots. Um, I have now worked for them for the past two years and I enjoy that experience immensely. I enjoy the coaching room, um, and, but I especially enjoy cooking and creating in my role as a coach and clinic user as well. So um, on the flip side, Dee is a hairdresser. So she has kind of like a dual career, two of her passions she gets to do all of the time. So, you know, just uh, thoughts out there is, is we can have more than one passion and, and share in that. And, and also when we surround ourselves with like-minded people, we have a better chance for success in the long run. And, and I think that um, D is, you know, 90% of the stories in my clinic um, of people that, you know, feel like they've got this. I, and, and a lot of times it's the person that loses the most weight and, and it can be for a couple of different reasons. Sometimes they're just, you know, sick of being on a discipline program. Sometimes it is that, they feel like, oh man, I was so successful. I don't need to phase out. I can, you know, I can handle this. And, and that's what, what hasn't happened is we have to address the emotional part, the reason why we eat while we are in phase one. And, and there's another great video, um, on here with uh, Rosemary from Ideal Weight Management in Florida, where we talk about those kinds of things, the journaling aspect, the prepping aspect, and what have you. So um, yeah, look that up. And so um, I wanted to share with us, uh, with you guys, that Melissa is online and she says, it can be easy and simple to open a package or make it gourmet and fancy and use these recipes. We are very fortunate to have her right here in our clinic in Redcliffe, which is awesome. I love Melissa. And, and Melissa has a lot of, of great information. You can also go look at one of the broadcasts that we did on blood pressure and uh, diabetes, and, and it's our highest rated video. You can, you can scroll through our videos here at Reformation Body Solutions Facebook page. Um, it's, it's an important subject and obviously something that people have an interest in. Okay, so again, send us your likes, your hearts, your shares. Tell us where you're from. Send us any questions that you have. So, Dee, um, why do people need to eat their vegetables? Why is that such a big part of not only the Ideal Protein Phase 1 program, but all of maintenance in real life? Well, vegetables, um, they are loaded with essential nutrients, macronutrients, micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, fiber. Um, and fiber is a word that people often get scared of, um, but fiber and water are in vegetables, and that's what makes us feel full. That's what makes us feel satisfied. And so just all the nutrients that go with them are a plus. And so a diet healthy in a variety of vegetables 
Um, it is just if they have proven over the years, this is where medicine has been consistent, is they know that cardiovascular health, heart health, like all your organ systems, um, your body contains less inflammation Sorry, um, when you have a diet rich, rich in vegetables. Um, it touches on um, another thing that a lot of people get uncomfortable or a little bit queasy when they talk about it, but it's also for your gut health, um, for your bowel health. It is so important with the absence of um, that water and that fiber from natural vegetables, um, elimination actually becomes an issue. And with that issue then can come gut disease. And, you know, things like diverticulosis, those types of things. And left untreated and to build, um, people can get actually very sick. And they just don't often realize that diet is a major role in that. In yes. Those. Yes. Gut, gut health is an extremely important aspect of what we're doing here in phase one. So we're getting rid of all the, you know, refined carbohydrates, all the starchy stuff, all the stuff that's turning to sugar in your system. And in, in, and we're also improving the pH level of your body to bring it more alkaline and in line with where it should be. And with all the fiber that we add to your diet, we are eliminating the issues of gut health. And, and that's like a whole video unto itself, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so before we go on, let's say hello to a couple of people here. Um, we have, uh, let's see, Toby is a coach and dieter um, from Shane's Guardian, a pharmacy in Redwater, Alberta. That's awesome. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, Candy Haslam says um, she's from Wisconsin, 48 weeks in. Awesome. And 148 pounds down, 20 pounds to go. That is amazing. Candy, I'm going to be starting a transformation and journey um, weekly show and I would love for you to join me so we'll talk offline and she also says not one gain all right that's awesome and that's where you know ideal protein is is great in phase one because we're in a box where we we've got all of our parameters and if we follow them the weight just drops off but when we get out into the wild, wild west, as I call it, that's when the real work begins. So we'll be doing some maintenance stuff, too. Uh, Debbie Parsons says, I've been on IP for seven months, but my month four, I was tired of the packages. So I was thrilled to find out you could make tons of recipes with these packages and many without the packages. And that's where D's recipes facebook group comes along and all you have to do is type recipe in the comments and you will get an a text or a, a facebook message sent to you and you will be able to join her facebook group so it's a private group she is amazing she does these beautiful recipe cards and um and is super super creative all right, Melissa says, keep up the good work, Candy. That's awesome. And also, Melissa says, great work, Debbie. Uh, Debbie Parsons says, um, thank you, Melissa. I'm 95 pounds down, 30 pounds to go. So living the recipe uh, helps and um, big time encouragement here. All right, well, Debbie, you'll have to join us also. Okay, so again, just type recipe and you will get access to Dee's recipe Facebook group, which is private. Okay, so Dee, um, let's go to what if I'm a picky vegetable eater? What do I do? Well, we're going to encourage you to start slow and slow and go. Um, if you're picky, that, that's okay. We want you to find a few favorites and we're going to find different ways to incorporate them. But then we're going to ask you to do baby steps. And so when, if you have a favorite veggie, so if you come to me and you say, you know what, I like zucchini. And I'm going to show you five different ways to use that zucchini. Whether it's going to be making chips, making zoodles with it, having them hot, having them cold, baking them into muffins or pancakes. 
um, anything like that. So first we're going to take your favorite and we want to present it to you in a bunch of different ways so that you can enjoy it. And then we're going to ask you to work on some small goals. So this is an overlapping theme, but it's an important one. So in your, day, in your daily journal, at the end of the week, some attainable goals are going to be, we want to see 10 different vegetables in your book. Now, a lot of people panic at that, but that is over seven days. So we also see that a lot of dieters, um, you know, I, we get a lot of feedback about, well, I don't need to bring a journal because I eat the same thing every day. Well, actually, we want to work on correcting that a little bit because we don't our body don't just need those certain vitamin minerals from a, a, a couple of choices we need to broaden that and then that's where comes in at least four to five different colors in your week as well and at first that might sound a little overwhelming too but when we really go through the rainbow of veggies and and how we can incorporate that into our week it's not as hard um as you think um Back onto the picky a little bit. So we always look at things um, prior to you starting the diet on what type of vegetables did you eat prior? Um, so if you say none, but you eat things like pizza or lasagna, you know, if there's that tomato sauce in there, well then I know you can eat tomatoes. And so we're just gonna need to find ways for you to enjoy them again. Yeah. I love that, that idea that you take the the past um what they eat in the past and just start working with that from the beginning because as a coach you know it, it is really a struggle and and i myself okay craziness here i grew up a vegetarian but every vegetable basically other than salad came out of a can and as a kid it was just gross and so when I became an adult, I just didn't eat vegetables. It was just like off my list. But you know what? Taco Bell was on the list. It was right at the top, especially at 1 a.m. So anyway, <laughs> um, okay, so um, one, one of my, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? And then just to add on that picky part, right? Um, we have many recipes and tips and tricks for burying vegetables into smoothies and again into cookies, into cakes. You can bake with veggies and you cannot taste them. You cannot see them, you cannot taste them, um, but you can blend such things with um, frozen cauliflower, all sorts of things. You can blend right into smoothies and shakes and, and it's a great way to sneak them in there. You don't even know you're having them. So, yeah. Yep, that's, that's how I started out when I first did IP. Um, I mean, by that time in my life, I had figured out that veggies were supposed to be a part of my life, but I certainly didn't eat four cups a day, which I do and now and I still do in maintenance. But the first thing I did was I started with baby spinach in my chocolate drink mix, which sounded just weirder than weird to me. But it really is. You can't taste the baby spinach and it gives you a lot of fiber and it makes the drink really uh, kind of hold in your tummy for a lot longer. So I do that with the peach mango. I'll do that with any of the smoothie drinks. Um, and it really, baby spinach is sweet, so it, it may sound weird, but I use a Nutribullet so that I'm able to really, you know, mix it up really good. So I'll do the water in the spinach first, and then I'll add the packet on top and just zip the packet just a tiny bit. Otherwise it gets a little bit too, too full, too foamy kind of. Um, so do you have tips on that on making smoothies? Oh, I, so um, there are so many different ways that you can make smoothies. And so if you were a traditional uh, yogurt and fruit lover for smoothies like prior to the diet, I just, I actually want to show you this because I have it um, right here. So this is, um, this, these are rhubarb cubes. And oh I God. do this with chayote squash and rhubarb are my two favorites. So this is actually rhubarb and it is stewed down and it's uh, with a little bit of sweetener. And I just simply run it through my blender and pour it into ice cube trays and freeze it. And then you have, you can make half a cup portions or a cup portions. And so for fast, fast smoothies, this is an excellent way um, to get your veggies in as well. And because it's cold and it's fiber and it's just full of bulk, um, they just, your, and how you were saying about the baby spinach really, it held on like you felt full for a long time. Right, right. Really do. So they can take any kind of a shape or pre-made and, and really turn into a big meal. Um, 
volume is a big part of that too. So if you take a 200 mil drink and you're going to turn it into anywhere from a 700 to a thousand milliliter drink, um, it takes a long time. It takes you longer to drink it. Um, yeah. But, it's, but it's incredibly fast to make. Um, so you don't, you know, it's not a lot of time for meal prep in the morning. And if you have any kind of commute, um, it, it's really easy to drink out of a to-go cup. Um, and just fast and simple. So, um, like I said, we do this with um, chayote squash as well. Um, Ideal protein makes a wonderful maple syrup and cinnamon, and same thing. Stir it down, blend it together, pour it into ice cube trays, and then you have um, I call them apple pie smoothies is is what I call them. But really delicious and the same thing. Fast going, easy, really easy. And then, of course, spinach. I, and you know what? I have a sweet dieter. She blends kale into peach mango every day um, for I, her breakfast. Yeah, I do too. I'll, I'll make a mix of uh, for the for the um, fruitier drinks like the peach mango and the orange. I love both of those. And really, they're 20 grams of protein with one carb. I mean, you you can't get a better fat burner product than that. And then um, I will put in actually with with um, with the orange drink, I will make it almost like a cucumber smoothie, and it doesn't even have cucumber in it. It'll just have kale and spinach, and I'll use mint, ginger, and parsley. Yum. It is, it's like a green smoothie, and I put the orange drink mix in it. Mm, super yummy. So, I mean, we could talk all day long about smoothie recipes, but so the cool thing is on Dee's Facebook group, you can get all these recipes. And not only that, you can ask D questions and she responds like, boom. And, and so you have, you know, access to D um, on, on a question basis. So that's, that's a special privilege. Okay. So let's uh, see here. Um, I, Michaela is such a special gal. She um, lives in another state and she was visiting her family and ended up having to stay longer than she thought her dad ended up in the hospital. But the good news about all the, the positive takeaway was I got to meet Michaela and we have been working together now for, gosh, I think about maybe five or six weeks. And she really is so committed to um, her program and and she has a fair amount of weight to lose. So Michaela, thanks so much. Um, I love you too. And I, I will follow you on your journey no matter whether you're in my state or you're back at home. Um, Michaela says, great tips, Dee, thank you. Uh, Melissa says, to recap the 10 different vegetables each week and four different color colors, and you need to journal and look at different options. So um, do you have some comments on that, Dee? Um, yeah, you know what, journaling is it, it's just pivotal. Um, it's pivotal to keep track of what you're eating, how much you're eating. And I've had the pleasure to see some really, really um, um, creative ways that dieters come up with meeting nutritional goals. So for example, I have a dieter who uses a code in the front of her book. And in the front of that book, she has salad one, salad two, salad three, and salad four. So that she doesn't have to physically write out each time her creations, right, down to, down to the wire. So she has four different types of salads that she likes and she enjoys. Each one of them contain different veggies, and so she coats them. So then I know that, you know what, in salad number one, there is romaine and cucumbers and peppers and tomatoes, right? In salad number two, it's going to be more of a, a cabbage slaw. So she might have two different kinds of cabbage, mushrooms, sprouts, and so on and so forth. So I know that if in her journal I see those four salads, one salad per day for four days, I know that she's not only getting her four cups of vegetables in, but I know that she's hit the four colors and more than 10 different kinds. Easy, easy in a week. And that's just one example um, of how you can do it. So often, you know, again, that comes through. I don't journal because I just eat the same things. Well, we really need to get you out of that rut. Your body becomes really complacent when you feed it the same thing day after day. So we want to trick it um, into always guessing what we're going to feed it. We want to keep that engine burning. And again, right, a, one of the most important ones, we want to get a variety of nutrients and minerals. And so if you're only going to eat cucumbers, you're not going to get that. 
Um, yeah. And so, yeah. So uh, one of the one of the things that I I tell my um, clients is that 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 list that says select vegetables, you need to be getting four cups from that list. And some of those vegetables will cross over onto the raw unlimited list, but the, that select vegetables list is filled with nutrition and vitamins and things that we need to feed our body in order to be you know, nutritionally well, and also in order to have the proper amount of fiber that we need for elimination and gut health. And so there's, there's just so many reasons why we have these vegetables. So let's take another question. Uh, Michaela asks, do you recommend the ready-made peach mango or the packet if wanting to mix with vegetables? Dee, what do you suggest? Really personal taste. Um, I, personal taste is that we can actually qualify or measure what I might love, you might not, and vice versa. So they will both work. There's no doubt about it. So it's really, it just really comes down to what your flavor is, or your, like your favorite flavor <laughs> preference is. And you know that ready-made peach mango, you can easily add um, extra ice and water to it as well to reach your desired consistency. Um, so there's there's not a right or wrong way. It really comes down to preference. Right. And, and, you know, one of the things that I will do when I'm making a smoothie with the pre-made mango, I will add almost a cup of extra water to it because it is a little bit thicker consistency. And then, you know, it just, to me, it tastes better. And then with the veggies also, you need that extra water. Um, with the packet, I always, I always add extra water to all of my packets. It gives them more volume. And I think it, it just tastes just as good. Um, and you're getting some extra water. Um, okay, so Debbie Parsons says, made the apple pie smoothie for the first time last night. Loved it, very filling. Thank you, Dee, that's awesome. Okay, so you guys, send us your likes, your shares, subscribe to our channels. We have a YouTube channel where um, a lot of these videos end up um, long-term. So um, I'll, I'll put all those links in later. Um, all right, Dee, so let's talk about vegetable prep made easy, because I know that's one of the subjects that you are really good at. So in the, in the baby stages, um, preparing and planning is key, but I also um, really love to stress about being flexible. So if you know what your favorites are, but you're also trying to plan and, and prepare food on a budget, um, keep in mind to be a little bit flexible when you're going to that grocery store and see what's on sale. Um, also, um, and there are vegetables that last a long, long time. So on how to store vegetables, like so once you take your veggies home and you are washing them, cutting them, preparing them, um, how you store them can make a world of difference. So if we don't store things properly, they can go bad in two days. If we store things properly, they can last longer than a week or more. Um, some is as simple as wrapping in damp paper towel to seal Ziploc bags, or you can get fancier and you can use actual veggie containers um, oh. that have been tested. They're perfect for veggie storage. Um, many companies make them in a variety of, we're really lucky. We have a Tupperware gal in our clinic and she sets everybody up um, with, with food that. storage. <laughs> yeah, with food storage. Um, on the, and the other great thing about prep and planning is most grocery stores now, if you are in a hurry, if you are stuck for time, they have pre-chopped turnips, rutabagas, onions, peppers, free then stir fry mixes, zoodles, uh, whether you're in phase one through four, uh, lots of phase four squashes are all pre-done for you as well. Um, frozen and canned veggies are not wrong. So you know what, the whole combination of fresh to frozen to canned, they're okay. Now, and a big question that comes into that preparing, planning and preparing is, well, I can't have canned tomatoes, they have sugar in them. Okay, you're right, they do. But it's because tomatoes naturally contain sugar. So when you're right. looking at canned goods, you want to read the ingredient list. So if they're devoid of sugar, they're safe. So I'm just gonna quickly show you just a couple things. So canned mushrooms, for example, totally fine to use. 
um, as long as there's just mushrooms and there might be citric acid in there, that is it so that they don't go bad, but no added sugar. Same with tomatoes. This tomatoes is the big tripping point for so many dieters. They naturally contain sugar. Read your ingredients. If it just says tomatoes and citric acid, you are good to go. They are part of your, well, these are occasional. So we need to touch on that one too. So when you're doing your meal prep and planning for the week, four cups of occasional veggies. If you are not sure what occasional veggies are, we're going to refer back to our phase one sheet and we're going to plan and prepare where we're going to use and spend those. Once you've had those four cups, you can't have any more in, in your week. And that's, that's really important. Um, you know, a lot of people think that a veggie won't slow you down, but they sure can if they contain too much natural sugar. So Dee, can you talk a little moment on the uh, on the occasional vegetables and why they are occasional? Yeah, for sure. They're higher in sugar and carbs um naturally um they have so you've heard of a g um uh, glycemic index in foods there's a glycemic index and there's a glycemic load and that's how those bodies respond respond in our system once we eat them so those ones have a little bit higher glycemic index glycemic load so we're going to get a little bit of a sugar spike from some of those vegetables naturally um, so we don't want to consume too many of them. Um, not only can it lead to a little bit too much sugar and calories and carbs, calories are negligible, but the, the carbs and the sugar part, if we eat too much of those in phase one, it's going to make us crave more. We don't, we want to keep our bodies out of doing the spike and the, and the low, and so we do need to keep an eye on those. And that is another reason, so there are lots of choices on your phase one sheet from your select to your occasional to your unlimited. And I know oftentimes we get dieters saying, but I want this. Well, I'm going to eat spaghetti squash anyway. And I and we're just, no, the no is for a reason. The no is for there is too much sugar and carbs and it's going to slow you down or even possibly kick you out. And yeah, you're, and, you're, and, and they really can. Um, and Another thing is, um, the school of Google can be a wonderful tool, but it's not always your friend. So often the diet will come back and say, well, spaghetti squash is the same amount of carbs as rutabaga. Okay, but the fiber, fiber is not created equal. How we metabolize that fiber is not created equal. Um, and the, the glycemic load is not created equal. It's how our body responds to those and, and treats them. So it's not always about simple numbers. That that makes you know. If right. it's not on the, right, so if it's not on the list, there is a reason why, and there's a lot on that list. And until you um, really get in the groove and memorize that list, uh, snap a picture of that list with your cell phone. Almost every dieter I know carries a cell phone, and so then you can always bring up that picture when you're at a grocery store to say, "Can I have that? Am I allowed that? Is it on the list?" So, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, one of the things I always tell my, so, my, my clients so is to have, have this on your phone, have your program sheet on your phone. That way, no matter where you are, if you are in a restaurant, you're shopping, there's no question. So, um, okay, okay, let's see. Let's, um, let's see, Tina says, uh, watching from Red Cliff Pharmacy. D, you are amazing. Thanks for joining us, Tina. All right, D. So, um, moving on, uh, tell us how and why the select vegetables curb hunger. So we touched on it before. Um, it is the fiber and the water. Those are the two things that are satisfying. So if you're hungry, um, the first thing that I would tell you to do is drink a glass of water. And it, and it is true because often when we think we're hungry, we're actually thirsty or dehydrated. And so with select vegetables, they are all loaded with water and fiber. And so they, they satisfy. And so if you're having a, a snack attack and you don't know if it's true hunger or if it's just a craving, then I'm going to really encourage you, go to that so, um, unlimited list, um, have a look on there. It is loaded with a, a whole bunch of different types of salads, but there's also your crop select and unlimited on there, like raw mushrooms and celery and cucumber and onions and 
radishes. All those kind of things can add a lot of flavor and zip to your food as well. I love, um, I call it vegetable salsa. So that unlimited list, taking those veggies, chopping them up, having them in a container. They're great as topping over salad or over meat or other vegetables, things like that. Um, if you think you're hungry, your first line of defense is that unlimited veggie list. You really might just need some more water and fiber to help you feel full. Um, if you ate those unlimited veggies or even your plucked veggies and you come back and you tell me it didn't work, I am still hungry. Okay, fair enough, but you're actually not hungry, you're craving. True hunger will be taken care of by vegetables. And that's a really neat thing about veggies. Now, that's if you are on program and staying true, true. to program. <laughs> okay, so um, if little things have stuck in there and you are craving, that could be why. Um, and everybody's, um, it's kind of a dirty word in the, in the, in the program is the word cheat. Let's talk about that for a second. So a lot of times, it's not that you've cheated. You really may have had something in it, unintentional that you don't know, and it can contribute to that. Um, restaurants, fast food places, all those kind of things, lots of their, their healthy selections do have hidden sugar, carbs, things like that, that and it causes it to crave. Um, and so while it's really, like, we're not asking for perfection, we're just asking you to do the best you can, but you need to be armed with the knowledge of things that will make you crave, make you hungry, make you think that vegetables aren't going to do their job. So they are, yeah. So it's, and it takes a while to learn the difference between a craving and hunger. Yeah. So what I, I tend to say is in the first three weeks, we are detoxifying our systems. Our, our system has been attached to all that for a very long time. And it's just like any other drug. We have to allow that time for it to detoxify. Once the three week mark hits, I don't know anybody that is hungry anymore yeah. or having cravings anymore if they do the program 100%. So don't put your own twist, twist on what you, what think, you think the think program should be or, you know, oh, what's what's a little bit of balsamic vinegar or what's a uh, half of an avocado? You know, those are healthy fats. The good news is everything comes back in maintenance. So understanding that this is uh, this is the prescription for the problem. Once the problem is gone, once you've lost your weight, you've re you've gone to goal. Everything, everything comes back. 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 Um, uh, so, so understanding that those things those are, things are gonna going to happen, happen, and you're going, you're to, going have to have cravings. cravings. So. Yeah. Um, um, Tell me, Dee, do you have any other tips that you want to share today? This has been a great program. I, I love everything you, you told us today. Um, you know, so many of um, really neat coping skills in the vegetable department, I, I learned from clients. And um, if they say, hey, I did this and it made me feel great this week, I'm always up for trying it. Um, one, one of my favorite snacks now is plain romaine lettuce with garlic salt on them and you just eat them like chips um, versus real chips. Um, dill pickles. Um, you know what? You're having a chip craving, a salt craving, anything like that. Dill pickles are a select veggie. Put them to use. Um, they're delicious in so many things. Uh, when it comes to it comes to what you can do with veggies, I can talk to ours. Our retail lady the other day, um, she stuffed her celery with egg salad and that egg salad was loaded with vegetables. So there are um, and then it kind of gets steamrolled into, oh, we could we could stuff pickles the same way, and oh, we could have tuna stuffed pickles, and we could have chicken salad stuffed pickles, and all those types <laughs> of things. <laughs> like you just um, a good old cucumber sliced into chips, and you know paired with our any of our real chips, um, taco salads made with our Doritos. Um, that you know. I have um, soups and stews. Um, you can bury so many vegetables. You can 
um, cold soups, hot soups. You can puree peppers down, or you can make meat sauce and hide so many cups of veggies into them. Hot hot soups and broth loaded with veggies are so satisfying. Um, can't find that veggie that we're talking about, or that we featured, or that you want to try. You go visit your produce manager and you ask them to bring it in. If you have other friends that are on program that also shop in that grocery store, the more pressure that you can put on them for those vegetables, they will likely bring them in for you. Um, this is my this is my favorite guy right here. He is a coyote squash. So you can have him sweet or savory. You can have him raw, you can have him stewed, um, it mimics apples. Um, I make ideal protein pie. <laughs> like, the, the sky is the limit. Um, cakes, cookies, muffin. The best cookie that I have ever made um, is made with a peyote squash. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, this is um, jicama. And jicama, also known as a Mexican potato, so a lot of your clients are probably really familiar with that. Um, if you find great this feller and squeeze out the extra water and dry it on a cookie sheet, you have coconut. You have a faux coconut. You can flavor it any way you want. And again, cookies, baking, and sprinkled on salad for that extra crunch once it's dried is amazing. Um, so that's that sinking in um, veggies where you might not think you like them or can sneak them in, but those are great ways to get them in. Um, same thing, excellent raw, this um, jicama is, um, that is. And sweet or savory, so I've had um, dieters be like chili lime on them or cinnamon and um, maple syrup. <laughs> I just had a little bit of a, um, I just wanted to really quickly um, say another thing about this. Um, it causes a lot of confusion um, I see on dieter pages and, and sites, and the jicama, it's it is, it's just diet friendly around the world. It, it's, I'm, somebody help me out here, but it's oligofructose inulin. Um, it's a soluble, soluble diet, dietary fiber, and um, it's an inert carbohydrate. We can't digest it. It doesn't go, um, it doesn't undergo metabolism in the human body. So there is no, um, any kind of response once we eat this. So type one, type two diabetic friendly, um, it's a real gem of a vegetable. And so wow. one to add, yeah, one to add to your to your list. Um, <laughs> and that kind of plays back to my carb story about when they say, wow, my team it had this many carbs. Well guess what? You don't get any carbs from this guy because we can't metabolize him. So that's why it's on on the list. Wow. Um, that's, that's yeah. Great information. I'm learning as we go, G. I love this. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, do you, um, have, do you have anything else you want to share? You know, um, there is always a, there's always seems to be the latest fad in tools, kitchen tools, kitchen gadgets. Um, you don't need fancy ones. You, you really don't. Um, good old, <laughs> good old, you know, chopping by hand is fine, and I totally understand um, if we need fast, faster methods. Um, there are all kinds of companies out there that make really high quality um, chopping, dicing, slicing. Um, but I actually prefer um, the really simple hand ones for myself. I find it fast and easy cleanup is more important to me than having a bunch of bulky appliances to do my chopping. So you probably all see like the star fruit choppers, those kind of things. They work, they're Nutribullet, works, it's it's mm -hmm. easy, simple, easy cleaning. Um, I see big fancy noodle makers. Here's mine. <laughs> I have them. I have it. I have it. <laughs> Here's mine. Twist, 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 done, throw in the dishwasher. You know, I, I'm not spending 15 minutes setting up appliances um, to chop and, and do my veggies. Um, I love mandolin slicers. Um, my fingers have been victim because sometimes. I forget to use my guard, um, but this is a mandolin slicer. This is how simple this is. And again, same thing, slice, 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 slice into the dishwasher. Um, I love after a grocery shop. Um, I like to buy, I'm far enough into, and I cook for a lot of people. So that also helps is that I like to do a big grocery shop and then I like to come home and package and prep everything out for the week. 
and and it's just so that maybe it's going to take me an hour or two hours to clean up my kitchen after a grocery shop but then i'm good to go for the entire week we've all yeah. seen these where people do their uh-huh their, yep. their salad yep. dinners. i mean not just for yourself but anyone who lives in your house whether you have partner husband children on the go get things done in, in baggies so this is this is actually frozen cauliflower uh-huh uh -huh. frozen fine grated cauliflower that was in a i did in a chocolate shake yesterday that that was from a client she said oh i just cauliflower in my chocolate shake and it thickened it and it was cold and it was delicious and i didn't even know it was in there i i had to go right home and freeze cauliflower um <laughs> and then and, and try it out myself because it was just something that I had never done. So on that um, too, I don't I don't have a lot done, but one thing: simple little snack size Ziploc bags um, for yourself, for your family. You can have dozens of them pre-done in the fridge. The other thing that I really want to touch on is you do not have to sit down and cram two cups of vegetables down at a time if that is really overwhelming for you. You can break it down into half a cup portions, quarter cup portions. You know, if you need to eat a half a cup bag of veggies on your way to work and another half at coffee break and then another half at lunchtime, that's not wrong. There is nothing, nothing wrong with that. At the yeah. end of the yeah. day, if you're journaling, it's, it's that you get it in within that day is what it's important. Not that you had to sit down and get it all in at one time. There's nothing wrong with breaking it down. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Um, I have some clients that have had a gastric, 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 gastric and uh, that's how they do it. So they do just, you know, small meals every two hours. Um, yeah. So definitely that works that for them. Works for them. Um, we have a couple of questions here. Um, Debbie Parsons asks, if I get too much salt in recipes for the day, will it slow my weight loss? I use my fitness pal and often it says I'm getting too much sodium. sodium. Um, but then Melissa says, no, Debbie, IP is very low sodium and it doesn't, and it doesn't have to get rid of the rid carb, of the carb. Insulin, insulin that tells that the kidney to kidney salt and water. And water. So um, that's all great information. Thanks for sharing. Um, any more tips before we head out, Dee? You know, I, <laughs> I have so much going on here. Um, I, I, I could talk my news all day. Um, if you have specific questions or concerns, um, if you're not sure how you're supposed to follow um, your select unlimited occasional, if you need a recap on on how to use those, um, or you know, if you even have a specific veggie that you like, um, that you need more more ways to enjoy it, feel free to ask. Um, we'll do our best to help you. Um, in the land of veggies, um, just know that it doesn't matter if you roast them, if you saute them, if you eat them raw, <laughs> if you bake with them. Um, it all counts. It all counts as your and. And the key to vegetables is that they are going to be your success for long-term maintenance. And so yeah. we need to learn um, to love them now. Um, they're not going to go away. They're going to be in phase one. They're going to continue them in phase two. They are still there in phase three, and they're going to be an integral part of your maintenance in phase four. In okay. phase four, you're going to welcome some of those veggies back that you might have had to leave to the side for a little bit, and we can get those incorporated back in. But um, my favorite saying, actually, in the land of veggies, and if you're watching your daily coaching videos from Ideal Protein, if you're not, get your coach to reset you to your proper phase, um, is no labels at the table. So that means <laughs> in your whole protein choices, and then your vegetable choices, there, there shouldn't be a list of ingredients behind them, right? It's just, it's a whole food choice. And you're going to be basing your meals around that, even in maintenance. And so basically the skills you're learning in phase one, you're going to carry through right to phase four. They're really just layering on them. Like phase two is a reintroduction of more protein. Phase three is your fat and carb back. And phase four is a continuance of that. So at the beginning, it might sound a little bit overwhelming, 
But in phase one, this is where we're going to develop really good habits that are going to sustain you in maintenance. Yep. yep. I love that. Thank you so much for all of you that are out there, even if you're watching in the replay. If you have a question, please list it in the comments and uh, Dee and I will answer your questions. Um, remember that if you want to join Dee's private Facebook group where she shares all her recipes and recipe cards and, and you can actually have you know access directly to Dee, just uh, all you have to do is type recipe in the comments section. Thank you so much for sharing, Dee. This has been so helpful. We've had so many people online today. I've been watching the numbers. It's super fun to see that, um, you know, as coaches, all we want to do is inspire you in a non judgmental way. We are on your journey with you, but you're really in charge of your own journey. We're here to give you tips and guidelines. We're not here to tell you what to do, to boss you around. We're just helping you stay accountable to your own self and to your and own goal. And, and that's and all we want to do. do. So, all right, thank you. It's been super fun, everybody. See you. Um, we'll be, just keep on watching because this year is going to be full of information. And uh, okay, one last thing uh, Melissa wanted to no note is that, oh, D is going to be featured on the Ideal Smart app in the baking video too. Are, are you with Chef uh, Ver Verity on that? Yes. Oh, yes. that's um, I I was given the privilege to travel to um, Quebec this summer, and uh, we shot um, thirty baking, basically baking um, oh. video creations, and it was a, a lot of fun, really inspiring. Um, and just so that all um, um, coaches and dieters, anybody out there, so our um, any recipe that you come to our page and see, they're, they're free. You are welcome to use them and share them. There is no fee. Um, I know that we're out of time and I wish that I had this too, um, but I also wanted to show you, I have a binder. So when we talk about cookbooks and recipe books, if you see a recipe you like, you print that puppy off and you hole punch them and you throw them in your binder um, for quick references. So um, in the land of, I don't have the patience anymore. I used to, to pin and pin and save recipes, but now I just hit print and throw them in a book so that I, and then just have your little pad, you know, soups, stews, cookies, whatever. Um, it's really easy to be, but I guess we'll have to share that at, on another time. But we need to share it. I don't have it right with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to show you um, how awesome and easy it is. And you know those um, little plastic slip cover pages that are you can buy like a hundred of them in Costco. Um, okay. And you can have that recipe you just laid out on your counter and just you know wipe it off and you get get it dirty because I'm a messy cook too. Um, so, but we can share um, some more of those things. Um, we need to, we could, we could talk veggies all day because there's also some veggies on that list that are natural thickeners, those kind of things. Um, so many things we could talk about. Um, so again, any questions, just fire them in the comments and we'll do our best to help you. And um, thanks, thanks for being here everybody. And thanks Renee, it's so fun. It is so fun. All right, keep watching. Send us your likes and subscribes and share with your friends. And uh, next week, I'll figure out who I'm going to be talking to. But Dee is definitely going to be a regular in, in our world on Facebook Live. All right, everybody, have a good one.